Hey, this is Glendon with the continuation of the first Hustler Consulting requested video. So I'm going to show you something a little different here. A little tool. <clears throat> I'll tell you where I got it or where you can do this at the end of the video. <clears throat> Excuse me. Stage one. So the question is, Greg, you thank Greg for doing this once again is he's moving out of a 2,500 square foot warehouse to a 5,000 square foot warehouse. So I'm going to give him a few ideals and I'm just going to talk about what I did. So you're going to have to use your imagination. That's draw some stuff here. And Okay, this is not going to be perfect, but let's go with this. This is a door. It's a crooked door. And let's see, let's do something a little bit better. And this is docks here, here, and here. And let's see, just right here. Uh, this is 10,000 square feet. Okay. So I'm about to segment. Now this is a representation of the public warehouse that we have. And I'll talk about the second warehouse on stage two. Now for public warehouse, there's a few things that if you're going to have people coming in, you have to be very, very considerate of you. Like if you've got forklifts or you have palleting where you're stacking stuff high up to the roof, you don't want customers entering in that area unless you've got to get it gated off or very secure because if a kid climbs up on this stuff or something happens and he gets hurt, there's a chance that people may want to sue if they feel you have money. If they feel that you're broke, they're just going to walk away and maybe say, get the medical bills if that. So just be really, really care. So stage one, uh, 10,000 square feet, there was no elevation. It was a regular warehouse that went, God, maybe 40 feet up in the air. But since we were having people in there, we did not stack stuff up. Now, the, here's some of the segmentation. Let's see, let's go about here. Yeah. This won't, and we're gonna say this is four, because I always talk about this, 4,000 square feet. And this is probably 3,000. And this is another 3,000. So this was high end stuff. Okay. It, oh. I forgot I have to click now this section was the nicest of the warehouse but it was also the slowest seller so we had 3,000 square feet now we'll say when nice in it was tricked out there was a lot of space in the aisles um, really really nice but this was you know we sell one item here it could make the weekend now this was middle of the road stuff and you want to segment your stuff. Let's go. Let's see. I can do this. I have the power of an eraser. I'll use this. And I'll just get rid of all that since I'm screwing up there. And go back to pencil. And go mid level stuff. This was mid-level. This stuff was a little faster saying, and I'll give you the ideas. 
<clears throat> high end stuff, a two, three, four, five thousand dollar bedroom set, front loader washer and dryers, um, the flat screens when they brought really good money, the larger televisions, and I will say this back end because there was kind of against the wall because that's where the power outlets were. This back end, I'll draw this was the electronics you want to keep the electronics where they you, you want to make sure your electronics are on uh, we usually spent like 30 minutes turning everything on because that's a question that people are going to ask does it work so if it's on they don't ask that question and they're more apt to buy so I don't think that's right but it looks it looks kind of sort of right so electronics was there there and there and there now once again this was the dollar section okay this looked like Beirut clothes and stuff were let's see like I said this were the cheaper electronics because it was like cheap 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 mid-level stuff and the very expensive stuff and also we had not a physical wall but the wall that we made with boxes furniture that separated this area it was a constructed when I say constructed there was no build out there was no construction there was no lumber we just used like dressers or we used boxes or we used stuff that we get out of the unit to construct this wall Let's see. Just put that. And that's a wall. And there's a reason for this. And this is how people came in. This was the entry door. And they came in like this. And, you know, here was the docks, the base. Let's see. Yeah. That, we had three bays. So this is where people would load stuff up. Now they came in this way. Now we had our desk check out you know let's see p point of sale that's easier to spell than check out so we saw people coming in and we could see and once again since this wasn't like a big wall it was just maybe three four feet high a few pieces from here we can watch the whole warehouse <laughs> and also they had to come out of this door to get out now this wall was here for a reason. It forced people to walk in here and we can watch them. There could be nothing really going on. They couldn't move stuff. I mean, it had a really, really good eye. Stuff over here, we didn't care about. Really, really didn't care about. Everything was a dollar. This stuff was cheap. It was extremely cheap. And, you know, it was uh, not really. It, 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 there was shrinkage, as they, as they call it in the industry. <clears throat> excuse me it was shrinkage but you know people stole stuff but we didn't really worry about it we would have spent more money trying to stop them from stealing stuff than we would have prevented them from stealing stuff and it was just a, an acceptable level of loss so we had the dollar stuff here and uh once again i'm gonna erase some stuff and show you but once again it's four thousand square feet three thousand square feet bedroom sets that didn't make it here they were scratched up they had issues and also before i forget once again another built-up wall another wall made from stuff out of the unit because what it did it, it forced people to enter in it's like we leave here we got to go here now i know this sounds crazy but from going here and going through this make up door, people feel like they're going to a different store. When these walls were not here, people treated all of the merchandise in the warehouse the same. We didn't care what the prices were, didn't matter. But once we started segmenting, and uh, you know, my partner had like a sign that says uh, luxury items, high end stuff, it changed people's perspective. It's a very simple thing, and it's a psychological thing, but it made a big difference. So once again, 
These walls are constructed of boxes. Uh, they're constructed of stuff for other units using furniture, heavy stuff to create, you know, segmentation. Now, mostly like, you know, like I said, we actually had a motorcycle, had a pool table and stuff over here. Once again, you want to leave yourself plenty of room to work because the walls only came here and this area here always stayed clear always never junked it up couldn't because this is how people would come in this is how stuff would get loaded you know people would bring their trucks up and sometimes to actually even create more seg segmentation i would park the big truck we'll just call that bt here or sometimes I would park it here because the truck represented new merchandise. Well, the people who were regulars, they knew this. So they would come in and it would just prevent people from parking here. And sometimes we would roll up, map off this area. But essentially, you want to segment. Now, I will talk about the other stuff in another section. Now, I'm going to bring out my handy eraser since I've got the power, I've got the power of the eraser and uh, I'm going to really get into some specifics here. I can take this down because I could have made this smaller. If you can't tell, this is my first time using this. And what do we do here in the G-verse? We try new stuff all of the time because it's lovely. So go back here. All right. So this is four thousand square feet okay now this area and we experimented with this you know you may want to do something different but this was mostly clothing from here just here clothing and I'm going to tell you why we did this the clothing was not on the rack. It was in boxes and totes on the floor. It was not folded up on, you know, or sometimes we'll take sheets, blankets, and just dump them on the floor. Uh, clothing on, that should be an N on floor. And the reason we did this was we did a benefit cost analysis. We were getting so many clothing items per week in the neighborhood of three to four thousand articles of clothing. When you count everything down from underwear to the bras and the panties. And I mentioned underwear and bras and panties because in that section, that stuff sold. It actually sold, believe it or not. So any clothing item, belt, shoes, whatever on the floor and no organization. Now, I know this goes against, you know, yeah, I'm going to stay away from big words. No organization. But people would find stuff. I would play games with people. Like, I would take their Ralph Lauren stuff and put it at the bottom of a tote and see if someone will find it. And so many times, they found that stuff. But this was the clothing and People, you know, we had trash bags over there and people come over and sometimes I didn't really care because if you're in the storage auction business, you know how bad clothing can stack up on you. So that was the clothing, cheap stuff. And this area right here, we kind of had supplies, you know, boxes, tapes and all this other stuff. Now, let's get to this area. <clears throat> In the units, we, we always got tables and stuff. Every time we got a folding table, a six-foot folding table, or if I saw someone with tables in the unit, i get to the tables because I will just draw them while I'm talking. After the clothing section, we had all of these tables with what I call plenty of room to walk around. And this everything on these tables was a dollar. Everything. So I'll just draw this. And there were several tables. I don't even remember how many. I know when I was shut the warehouse down, I sold. I know one guy like 30 and there was still a bunch. So there was a bunch of tables. 
And once again, these are the electronics in this area, so you got to leave room and just the dishes, uh, microwaves, certain things, knickknacks, <clears throat> glasses, pots and pans, all that stuff was on the tables. Because once again, remember all the furniture and the big stuff that was this here. So tables, 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 <laughs> tables, anything you could think of. And you can get tables real cheap. I would not say go out and spend a lot of money on tables. More tables, more tables. And that's a weird table. That's like a piano table. So the boxes and the trash bags are over here. We, and like I said, we did a great deal of recycling because, and you know, this is predicated on if you're a storage auction buyer. We didn't throw boxes of stuff away. We stacked them against the wall because when people hit this section and they needed ways to get the stuff out, hey, grab a box here. We had tape, tape your box up, grab a trash bag. You get stuff off of here. Uh, also, we had like the dollies, the dollies uh, and the floats and the carts in this area because people would move them. And we had some over here, too. So essentially, that is how the main warehouse was set up. Now, I'm going to show you. Yeah, got all this. Now I'm getting ready to uh, grab my eraser and show you what it looked like when we moved in. <clears throat> so I am becoming an erasing fool because he's moving from. Get rid of all that. He's moving from 2,500 square feet. Now, this was 10,000 square feet. So, you know, you can just kind of go like half of what he's moving into. So, he could easily do this by just adjusting the percentages of where putting stuff. Now, I'm going to show you some other stuff. If I get rid of this. Okay. So, when we moved in, this is what we were using because we had come out of 3,000 square feet. So for a while, this was just wide open and empty. I mean, people would come in, it was just, you hear echoes and stuff. That's how it would be. It was just wide open and empty. <clears throat> completely, completely empty. Now, what I'm going to do, let me think about this. Uh, I wonder if this is gonna work, hold on a second. I can hope this works. Let's see, will it do it? And it did. Voila. Okay, for those of you who know, Draw Island, if you ever want to play around with this stuff. DrawIsland.com. Okay, so now I don't even have to go back. Now I'm going to show you. Well, first of all, I'm going to sketch it out. The second warehouse was not as big, but nobody went in there. Now we're going to talk about a totally different animal. I need to let go. Sometimes it's just hard to let go. And this one was different. It only had two dock doors very far apart. And that was the entrance. All right, let's get the pencil out again. This was 6,000 square feet. And that was the deal there. 6,000 square feet and we're going to talk about pallets and the uh, shelving okay we had just go just to make it real simple bam 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 this is pallets this is uh shelving that went up four tiers Uh, I'm probably gonna screw this up and I'm not gonna look it up either shelving here here and here and here also got leaves aisles 
Once again, let's see about here. More shelving here. Because we had a cherry picker in this warehouse. And a forklift. More shelving. More shelving. This was full from the Ruta to the Tuta. This is one of the reasons it took me so long when we shut down to get rid of everything. Including the shelving. Everything sells in the warehouse. Because everything has utility in a warehouse. More shelving. So, once again, this area was clear. Because you're moving stuff in. You didn't want to have, you know, be too close. Even those up. So, this was clear. And no customers ever came to this warehouse. Maybe every now and then one or two, but not like wide open where people would come in with their families and kids and stuff. <coughs> this is where we kept like the really valuable stuff. This is where we kept the eBay stuff. This was when we were doing eBay before we outsourced it. Well, this was kind of like the eBay, Amazon processing area. And now this was just a shell. There were no offices or nothing, just a shell. Uh, the bathroom was here. That was it. So if you are not going to have any... <coughs> customers coming in you can just really go now this like I said this was up four levels four levels high and I want you to think about this whatever you can get on the first level you can get on the other three levels so it gives you you know uh, essentially there was more stuff in this 6,000 square foot warehouse than it was in this 10,000 square foot uh, warehouse because everything was freaking spread out like a store so there was a big difference between the way this one's this was set up more like a traditional warehouse and i don't need that this was set up more like a traditional warehouse and this is was set up kind of like a retail store inside a warehouse there was no heat there was nothing now let's go ahead and address the question some more let's just go ahead and cut this bad boy uh let's get the pencil hold on because that's just gonna Stay there for a minute. All right, let's go ahead and cut this uh, bad boy in half. And, you know, it really depends on what you are selling and who you're selling to. If you are just shipping stuff out, the layout really, really doesn't make uh, a whole heck of a difference. You know what? Uh, for that, I'm going to do this since this now works for me. Okay, we're going to go up here, uh, do this. Now I'm going to give you the first warehouse. Since we're talking about warehouses. Now this is the door. Uh, you don't, okay. Some, like I said, sometimes it's just hard to let go. And boom. And this had... And this is a ramp. Oops. Oh, I got to get the pencil. This was a ramp. That was the dock. And this was, let's see, let's put this 3,000 square feet. Also, this was very different because this had this. Oh, let's see. That was an office. That was an office. 
I was in the office. And this was kind of just like an open area. And I think the bath was. It's weird. The bath. Was, no, actually, the bath was here. Because I'm getting confused. Okay. Bath was there. So this was an office. And I, I must admit, I kind of liked having the offices because when we left here, we went into just wide shells. The offices were nice. That looks like something else, but trust me, it's office. And <laughs> this was eBay. That's horrible. This was just go Amazon. And this was storage. We had lots a lot of stuff locked up here. And that was another reason that people didn't go to the secondary warehouse because we didn't have like the real we, we could make storage, but we didn't have the defined storage that we had here. So this was offices and then this was open it wasn't really set up uh, was moving a lot of furniture from this warehouse on Craigslist ton of furniture on CL so if you it, once again it, it really kind of depends on what you're selling you know I'm giving you this based on what I used to sell, which was furniture, clothing, appliances, electronics. Now I'll go back here, you know, let's just say go back to mid. I'll put that back. Act right. Mid and uh, let's see, dollar section. In the mid area. So mid stuff appliances and stuff were here and there was you know high voltage outlets here also so the appliances was here furniture was here but here everything was just kind of clustered up together now you can do quite a bit out of 3,000 square feet you can do a ton a ton of stuff so that was you know the, the secret warehouse, 6,000 square foot. The main warehouse, 10,000 square foot. Um, the first warehouse, 3,000 square foot with a drive up ramp and a door down here. I didn't understand that. Um, and like I said, offices. So that's pretty much the end of the presentation. That's how we did it. Like traditional warehousing. And this is, you know, the retail store inside the warehouse with no st stackable shelving everything everything's just wide open okay if you like this video and you thought it was helpful remember Greg paid 50 bucks for this and this is the deal I'm the same deal that goes to Greg is the same deal that goes to you if this hustler consulting requested video makes fifty dollars in donations just click that little gray eye that's up here at the video and if it exceeds that, Greg gets his 50 bucks back and it becomes a fully crowdsourced consulting video. How cool is that? All right. This is Glendon. I will see you on the other side.